And good evening and welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. My guest this evening is Nancy Wyman, who is the state Democratic chairwoman for the Democratic Party for the state of Connecticut. Chairman Wyman, welcome. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having no me. No problem. Um, Thanks it's great to see down. you again. It's, it's been a while. It makes been me a feel while. really good. <laughs> I know. It's been a while. So how have you been? It's been great. You What's know, new? everything has changed yeah. in my lifetime. At Obviously. Least, you know, from becoming from Board of Education to then going on to being a state representative for eight mm -hmm. years and then going on to be controller for 16 years and then lieutenant governor for eight years. So I'm now back to volunteering again <laughs> as, as state party as chair. As state party chairman. Yeah. So what exactly as state party chairman do you do? You know, it, it, we've, we're in the process of rebuilding our, our committee. Okay. We want to make sure that we expand, mm -hmm. bringing in new people, young people that are really important to us um, to come into the party to build on it. We have, you know, we're concerned about our municipal elections coming up, so we want to build on that to expand and have enough people coming in to help out the municipalities to kind of go more blue than red. And to get young people ready to come out there and work and go run for office. Right. You know, teach people that you didn't have to plan on this when you were born. Um, like myself, who had never had a thought about running for office. Um, I started out as an x-ray technician, and all of a sudden, because of what was going on in my town on education, um, I started to get involved. I want people to understand that they can get involved because of the issues they care about or how the changes that he want, they, they want. And it doesn't matter if you went to school for political science right now tell us a little bit about your background obviously I know who you are and but my, right. some of my viewers might not know your your background besides you being the former lieutenant governor and the former comptroller let's start you know, let's start from square one square one is uh, I was brought up in Brooklyn New York okay and you can kind of tell by the no, accent I, no I never I, could tell I, I, I just think that that's the only way I got elected because they couldn't understand me <laughs> in Connecticut uh, but I ended up um, to be honest with you yep. uh, didn't like what was going on in the, my local town of Tolland okay and I ended up um, going out to fight and wanting to impeach the Board of Education because I didn't think they were doing a good job and as I got more and more involved, I realized I couldn't do that. And so I went to a caucus, which I didn't know what it was, yep. because we never knew. I didn't get involved in politics before. No. I knew to vote, and my parents always voted, but I didn't know much about the political system. Right. And so I went to this caucus, and there was a little bit of a turf war in the caucus, which I didn't know about. Yeah. And somebody came out and put my name in to run for the Board of Ed. And I went, what? And they <laughs> said, the woman next to me was the Democratic town chairman's wife who said, don't worry about it. My husband will take care of it. Just don't have a fight here. Don't say anything. <laughs> and I didn't, and the next thing I knew, um, he told me he couldn't get my name off the ballot, which wasn't true, but it's okay. Um, and I ended up running for Board of Ed in my town, served there, like I said, for eight years. And then um, one day, one of the state reps was saying to me, hey, you know what? The Senate seat is open in the district, and I'd like to run for it. And I had where I started to work for him. Uh, for a few years, okay. and they gave, got, in fact, I hurt my back, so I couldn't do x-rays, so they got me a job in the House Democratic. Okay, sure. And, and so when the, the state rep came to me and said, hey, would you just put your name in there to hold the spot, because I might want to run for Senate, but if I don't, I want to be able to come back. And I said, sure, but I don't want to be a state rep. Okay. Well, he didn't yeah. tell me that true thing because next thing I knew he wasn't running for state senate or state rep and all of a sudden everybody asked me to run for state rep uh, which I did and he did yeah and served I was very fortunate to serve as vice chairman and then chairman of the education committee on the appropriations committee and um, after eight years I decided I wasn't going to run again mm -hmm. and somebody said to me on my way home 
from the convention for Bill Clinton, they said, are you really going to give up, Nancy? And I said, yeah, I'll find something else to do. They said, well, if you could do anything in state government, what would it be? Uh -oh. And I said, state controller. And the gentleman said, you mean secretary of state? Because as you know, Peter, most of the time when women got into yeah. politics, it was secretary of state. state. And there had never been a woman state controller. So I ended up, uh, we make a long story short, yeah. um, I ended up running for state controller. Yeah. And the fun part about it was that um, uh, I ran with a young man named Miles Rappaport. Oh, absolutely. That you know. I remember ended that, yeah. up running for, he ended up running for Secretary of State. That's right. And every time they would go to introduce us and we were together, they'd say, the next Secretary of State, Nancy Wyman. And so I had, he'd look at me and he said, <laughs> I said, I look more like a Nancy than you do, Miles. So I'll get up there and explain that my voice is deeper yeah. than yours. Right. So you should know that's why I'm running for state controller. Exactly. And then, of course, they served there 16 years mm -hmm. when Dan Malloy asked uh, me to run for lieutenant governor with him. So, and then eight years went by and uh, uh, Ned Lamont asked me to run, asked me to serve as the state party chair, and um, we went to the state central committee, mm -hmm. and they all voted me in, and so here. And, and then, then here, now and then here you we invited are. me. So and, I love it, Peter. I'm and, glad I'm and, still in politics and for then, that reason. And then, and then here we are. Yeah, that's right. That's so right. Do, you, do you miss not being up in the Capitol and miss not no, being I, I miss not, the be, not being lieutenant governor? No, I miss the well. You know, you get spoiled when yeah. you're lieutenant governor. I have to be honest. Um, because you do get a state trooper to drive yep. you, and you get your own car and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I love getting behind the wheel of the car now. <laughs> I even learned how to pump gas. There you uh, go. <laughs> and, uh, but the truth is, is that I miss the people. Yeah. You know, um, when I can get to go and see some of the local people in all the towns, or I go someplace and somebody still remembers me, um, I love it. I, I do because I love speaking to the people of the state. And obviously, you've got a good team at State Central. Yes, it's a new team, and we're starting out, and we have a lot of work to do. We want to build our team so that we can go in and help at the municipal level, as well as planning for 2020, because yeah. um, that's important to us. Right. And it's just making sure that we also get the word out to the people of the state what's actually going on, that we can talk to them, that they can feel comfortable to call us up and say, we would like you to do something else, or here's our opinions. So the one thing we're doing is opening up our doors to State, uh, to state Central, to the people of the state to say, call us, speak to us, let us know what's going on, tell us what you're feeling, um, and at the same time, we're going to be doing the, the, the new kind of uh, advertising, of course, as you know, mm -hmm. you have Facebook and all social media and yep. stuff, which is way over my head. Oh, yeah. um, and, but at the same time, not forgetting where we came from. Exactly. They're still door knocking, talking to individuals, oh, yeah. understanding what they feel. Oh, yeah. I've, I've been, as you know, I've, I've been son of an elected official since 1987. My mom retired a couple of years ago, and people are like, so do you miss it? I'm like, sometimes, yeah, but they were like, yeah, but you got the show keeping you busy. I'm like, right, I'm that's like true. exactly. So it's like I'm and your still. your mom was a great servant to the state, uh, exactly. to the state, and a great lady, and I was very privileged to have her as my friend. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I also have to let you know that you have one heck of a scheduling and PR person. He is very attentive, especially getting back to me. That's good. He knows better. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, he is great. He's, you know, it's nice to have young people involved that have never been involved before. No. And he's there. He did work for Dan Malloy for a few months. Oh, okay. And um, we were very happy to have him come over to State Central. At the same time, uh, we're all we're both learning from each other. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. So what, what's what's going on with the state party? What, especially with the local elections coming up this year in 2019? 
Well, we are going out and talking about a lot of the <coughs> social media. Okay. So we have a young man uh, that works for him. His name is Isam, okay. and he understands how um, our va what we, they call van yep. computer uh, works, and it go he's uh, going out to explain it to local elected officials, local party officials, so that they can get in and get the information that we've already gathered on voting pe people who voted, um, how to get in touch with them. This is something both parties have. It's not Democrat or just Republican. Right. Both of us have the same kind of information for our own parties. Right. And so he's out there going around to our state, even though it's a small state, mm -hmm. it's still a big state for him to go around to. He's, uh, and so at the same time, we're talking about how to get other information out, how do we use that social media, but also how do we figure out how to bring our party together? Because there are many different viewpoints in our party, just like it should be, and we want all of us to work together, to negotiate, to talk about what's the best way to go forward for the people of the state. You know, as you know, I'm a grandmother, and yep. I, and you know, my grandchildren live in the state. Yeah. I want this to be the best state possible for them to stay here as I do for every other person in the state. And as I say to my friends, don't mess up. Exactly. Don't mess up with a Jewish grandmother. Exactly, exactly. And how important is it to get out there and do the door knocking and do the handshaking when you're running for political office? You know, um, there's all that new social media that's yep. doing a great job and a lot of people look at that. Oh yeah. But when people go up to the door, I'll only, only give you a, a quick example. Sure. I went up when I was running for the Board of Education. The town of Talland is not flat. No. So we got lots of hills and valleys. And so I was walking around and I went up this very long, long driveway and I knocked on the door. That was the first mistake because I should have waited a little while <laughs> because the woman came to the door immediately oh, no. and she said, hi. And I couldn't catch my breath because I walked up the long Exactly, outside. you walked up hi, the driveway. Hi, I'm Nancy Wyman and I'm running for the Board of Education. And she said, you know, nobody, she said, where's your car? And I said, oh, it's way down the street, panting way down the street, <laughs> and she said, nobody's ever walked up to my driveway. I'll be voting for you, for whatever you want to do. And I went, thank you very much. To find out she was not a Democrat, she was a Republican. Really? And to the day, Excellent. the last time I ran, she voted for me every time, and I've seen her all the time. It's people want to talk face to face. Right. And you don't always have to agree with each other. No, of course not. But as an elected official, it's always great to listen to other people's opinions. To so say to yourself, wait a minute, my opinion is not the only one. There's other people out there. And so is there a way that we, because they have good ideas, that we compromise? And I learned that while I was also in the legislature, because. Um, as chairman of the Education Committee, uh, the Republicans had their, their members there yeah. and their ranking members, and we would go through bills together. And I'm not a lawyer, though one of the ranking members was a lawyer, yeah. and he, he would say, you know, Nancy, you should write it this way. And I went, okay, so we wrote it that way. And I then went back to him and I said, Paul, you know, we're gonna take the bill out next week or next day or so. And he said, well, you know, I can't vote for it. And I said, yeah, I understand that. But he was there to say, hey, you're gonna get it through, but let's do it properly. Exactly. And so I said, okay, Paul, yeah, okay, what are you gonna say on the floor? And he said what he was gonna say on the floor. And I said, okay, this is what I'll say on the floor. And we both had different opinions, mm -hmm. but at the end, we had the debate, the bill passed, but we went out afterwards, we came back down together and talked and became friends again and worked on the next bill. And that to me is one of the things that we're kind of missing, in what we're seeing here in Connecticut, or worse in Washington, right. is that we are not working together. 
not one party is the smartest party in the world. Exactly. And that we need to work together as human beings because we all care about our kids, our grandchildren, and the future of the state or the future of the country. Nancy, would you mind sticking around for another segment? Sure. We'll be right back. Check out this park. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show, sitting here with Democratic State Party Chairman Nancy Wyman. Nancy, welcome back. Thank you again. Thank you. So we were talking a little bit about in this in the first segment about what's going on in the state Democratic Party. Let's talk let's open up this segment talking about how important it is to get out there and vote and how important it is that you make sure you're registered to vote. You know, if you really care about your life your children's life or your grandchildren's life. If you care about that, then you have to get out there and vote. You've got to voice your opinion, and every vote counts. People don't understand when you look at, I, I for one, um, lo almost lost an election by 65 votes. I mean, I won it by 65 votes, and I could have lost it very easily. And, but people came out to vote. People have to, I think, as, as somebody that's run for office, I think every candidate, even though you have all this new social media, face-to-face yep. -face is so very, very important. Absolutely. Um, I will tell you that my husband's the registrar of voters in Tolland. Okay. And as soon as my oldest granddaughter turned 18, he was there with the piece of paper to say, okay, sign up. To to register to vote. And she would call every time, she, she's in college now, she said, what do I have to do? You know, I'm gonna be in college. So give them the absentee ballot, send it in. Because she knows that nowadays, um, you've got to speak out and do what you really need to do. So I will tell you though, a, a kind of an interesting story for me, and I'm not gonna go into it fully, but I have a grandson who uh, came over the house, and he's a very verbal young man. All right. And so I said, Max, how's school going? And he said, it's fine, Grandma. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, what's going on with soccer? You know, that, those are really, it, that seems good, Grandma. But he wanted to talk about, he said to me, can I say, Grandma, can I ask you something? And I said, Max, you can say anything you want to Grandma. And he went into talking about issues at that time, 11 and a half years old, about what could affect him. And I told him the story about this nine-year-old young man who came to the Capitol, nine years old, okay. and came because he knew when he got into high school that at that time that he might have to open up a frog for biology, and he didn't want to do that. How could he change it? And I'll make this story very short. This young man, Jack, went through the process of going up and talking to every legislator. He went and talked to, at that time I was the lieutenant governor, um, came to talk to all of us. He testified, nine years old, in front of uh, a, a committee, at the, the, information, the school committee, the education that was in there, and to make a long story short, the last night of session when yeah. I was on the, you know, as, as Senate Chairman, as Senate uh, Chairman, uh, Senate Pre President rather, 
I called him down because we knew the bill was going to pass. And he got to bang that hammer. Ah. He's been coming in every year bringing new kids into the legislature, trying to teach them about it, the legislature, what the process was and what he had to go through to pass a bill. I just saw him the other day. He's, uh, he was working on a Democratic town, he happened to be working on a Democratic town committee. Ah. Um, and he's thrilled and he's done so much for everything. If we don't get people out to vote, we're never going to remember what and what, what we should, remember what we should be fighting for. Right. We cannot allow other people's voices be our voices. We have to give our own voices. Our voice is very important. And it doesn't matter. People have to understand that if you look at just my background and many other people's backgrounds in politics, you don't have to be brought up to, to being a politician or wanting to be a politician or become anything else. Your road changes in your life. And we need people out there to register to vote because it is your f future. We need people out there to run for office mm -hmm. because of all ages and we really need the young people right now right. because that's what builds on for our future. And now when we look back on people that were there before us, they just gave us a base. Democrat, Republican, it doesn't matter. There was a base built there. The foundation was built on. You can change that foundation as you build up. You can change what it looks like because of the new things that are going on now. And people have to understand that we need them to come out, door knock, talk to people, think about what you want to do. Help people behind the scenes is, is, is as important as being in front of the scene. Absolutely. And you have to be 18 to run for a political office. Yeah. 18 to be, to, to, um, to vote. Yeah. To register to vote. Vote, you know, and depending upon your age, um, at certain times when you become uh, elected to office. Okay. So as a, as a president, you have to be 36 years old. Yep. As a state rep, 18 years old. Okay. And as time. far as bills or legislation up at the Capitol mm -hmm. that, that could affect voting, laws and everything going on up there. What's, go, what's going on? Well, we're trying to expand the time that you're allowed to vote okay. um, so that we can vote earlier. Okay. Um, and the Secretary of State, Denise Merrill, is out there working on that all the time. And there are some bills out there now, that, that there is one bill out there now um, that I don't think made it, out, I don't know if it made it out of committee or not, for a 16 year old, 16 year old to vote. This state rep that put this bill forward had been talking to young people in his town, both Democrats and Republicans, and they think that they have the ability to vote on the local level, not on the state level, not on the national level, but they want to vote on the state, on the the local. Right. I don't know if the bill is going to come out of committee. I don't know if it's going to pass. But it's a new idea. Um, there's, there's some discussion on should 16-year-olds really have the right to vote uh, when 18-year-olds can't even have a drink. Exactly. And so there's lots of discussion going back. And when you look at it all, then, they, you, know, then you talk about our wonderful young men and women that are soldiers that go in and join up now um, that are 18 years old and can go and fight in wars. Can't have a drink, but they can go fight in war. So there's a lot of discussion now about age and how people change in their life at different ages. Okay. Um, but I, I do think that um, we as the people in the state and yep. the nation should help make those decisions. And the way to do that is being out there to vote, vote for the people that stand up for what you believe in, and be out there working for those people behind the scenes or running yourself so that your voice can be heard. Now, if people want more information on the State Democratic Party, where should they go? I think it, you're gonna have that on yep. the, 
on our, uh, underneath yeah, the was, screen. Yeah, I was going to say uh, that should be on the screen. You know, please get in touch with us. Then pick up the phone, call us. Uh, if you want to get involved, we can always use you. Absolutely. If you want to volunteer, especially now it's volunteerism. Yeah. Um, we, we accept it. We'd love to have everybody around because not only do we do, do work for State Central, we then go out and help other cities and towns that are running candidates that need help at a time. It's a great learning experience for many of them. And so did you know, in, in many cities and towns, which I really, really wish, wish it was every town that had a high school right. in it, that there would be both a Democratic young Dems and a Republican young Dems. Yeah. Because that's the way we're gonna get people excited and be able to speak out. Back in the day when I was in high school, there was a young, there was a young Dems group, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And you know, but when I went to school, there wasn't any, right. and that was even longer. <laughs> <laughs> now, are the are the are the young Dems still? Inv are the young Dems still involved? Are they there, still around? There are yes, there are young Dems. They're still around. Okay. it's a statewide young Dems. Right. There are also uh, young Dems that, that the high school level that are actually. Um, uh, there are very few of those, sorry to say, in the high schools. We need to do more of that. Cool. Well, Nancy Wyman, we're about thank to say goodnight, so I want to thank, thank you. you for coming down. We'll, have, we'll, have, we'll see you again soon. I hope so, Peter. You thank you. It. Thanks, Nancy. On behalf of Nancy Wyman, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night. We'll see you next time.